Hello everyone, welcome to Analysis Trends. I'm Rupam. I'm currently a business analyst. In this video, we are going to discuss about trace requirements. There is a lot in this video, so please watch till the end because I will be giving you a requirement traceability metrics uh, template where you can download and perform the requirement uh, trace requirement activity. Also, I'll be explaining you the Babok chapter 5.1, which is trace requirement and the purpose, description, input, output, stakeholder, and everything related to this. And I'll also walk you through the website where you will be able to see the content related to the video. So let's move forward and understand how do you manage trace requirement for Babok chapter 5.1. Moving forward, as per this topic, the requirement lifecycle management is a chapter, which is the fifth chapter in Babok, which describes about how does the requirements flow and what is the life cycle of it. Basically, there are five subtopics that is trace, maintain, prioritize, assess and approve requirements. Moving forward in this video, we are going to only learn about trace requirements and using requirement traceability metrics, we can understand how to trace requirements. The purpose of the trace requirement is very clear. Um, it is just because that you have already collected the requirements in elicitation and confirmation activity. You have all the requirements collected. Now you want to track the requirements in order to make sure that the requirements and designs are aligned to each other. The description we're going to le learn using mind map. The inputs, you already have requirements. You already have design requirements. Now you need to understand whether those matching or not. The elements is how level of what level of formality you want to use to do this. It's up to you. The relationship you want to derive the relationship basically it is based on how do you want to derive the requirements it might also depends on dependencies that is why we're going to look into each of them using mind map later in this video next guidelines tools techniques stakeholders and output everything is very well shortly explained in the website called analysistrends.com trace requirements so we'll directly move to that website and look into trace requirements and learn more about it so let us wait for it to load and here you go this is a website called analysis trends and you got trace requirements so let us go with the first one called purpose and description now as we discussed the purpose of trace requirement is very clear it is just that we ensure its alignment between the requirements and design so you have requirements already captured you also have designs that are that has already been captured now you just want to make sure that both of them are aligned now what are the change impacts so we have um, many more uh, changes that can that might be coming in the picture we want to relate it to the requirements so that is more about purpose and description so we're going to look into mind map and understand how it is well defined so the reason we want to do this requirement or do this is very clear right uh, we identify the requirements lineage we also identify the functionality and detection of each requirement. What is the benefit of using or doing trace requirement is we can do a faster impact analysis. We can do a reliable inconsistency detection, deeper change insights and clear requirement assessment can be done through trace requirements. Consideration, we do a balanced relationship type for representation and we support requirement allocation and planning. That means whenever do we, whenever we do any trace requirements we will have both lower end and high end or we can say reverse uh, requirement reverse uh, dependency and forward dependency clearly defined and visual representation is basically all over whatever documentation whatever trace requirement metrics you prepare that is very well suited for this requirement moving forward what are the inputs you need in order to conduct trace requirement basically the inputs you need is requirements and design so you have all the requirements collected from the stakeholders during your elicitation activities you have designs which are linked back to the requirements which is like a solution component which can be solution component once it is developed both of them is your are your requirements uh, and designs are your inputs elements the elements are the key it will tell you how do you can how you can actually perform this like a best practice uh, for doing this trace requirements so the formality level Consider values and relationship nature effort increaseness with formality. So what kind of formality level you want to take in picture for this requirement gathering or for trace requirement relationship derive link across abstraction level is the requirement derived at the very first stage. That is what we need to check dependency dependency is any requirement which is related to, to other requirement or not. If it is requirement that is dependent on previous requirement, then that is where you need to track that or maintain that we also need to also define whether that requirement is satisfied 
or not is that complete is that is that connect to implementation element or not next validate we also need to define the links for testing element that means a test case on how to do that then we have traceability repository the requirements can be stored in a document or can be extracted or can be managed on tool as well right moving forward we got guidelines tools and techniques what you need to do trace requirement you need to have domain knowledge because that will give you a business expert information management that will make you to make good decision legal regulatory knowledge that is very much helpful in compliance and requirement management that as various tools are used to do that what are techniques that can be used to trace requirement is a business rule analysis connect rules is very important what what requirement connect next requirement that is dependent on business rule functional decomposition every requirement is break down into different components and that can be traced right process modeling visualization and trace requirement this is what we will be using the metrics the requirement traceability metrics and scope modeling illustrate and trace relevant requirements basically we do the same thing again in the requirement traceability metrics okay moving forward we got stakeholders and outputs so the stakeholders are everyone here involved to whom you contact to get approval to get uh, requirement gathering to get it uh, on a correct way to validate it to test it every stakeholder is involved here what is the output whatever input you had requirements and design are now converted as traced requirement and traced design as an output okay so this is where you will able to understand the whole in the babok when you read it moving forward we have something for you in the website called requirement traceability matrix a simple template and you also have a detail about the template mentioned here you just need to go to this website download this template and that will allow you to give an example how do you want to do it so in this video we're going to take more 5 minutes of our time and do a real time requirement traceability matrix and understand how can we use it and how ba use it in his or her projects okay moving to excel once you download that file you will able to see this template in your desktop this is a very simple and very very clean example a clean template you can use in order to define your requirements so let us take an example and try to build a whole requirement requirement uh, uh, matrix i will be keeping only the first uh, row as a reference and i will be building the requ requirements in the next row for an, for a, for an example so let's say the example here is we are a business analyst so everyone watching this video consider themselves are are a business analyst and try to understand that you are working for a project which is a car development website where you want where you want to build a, web, a website for a car seller uh, company and you want to build it as per their requirements so consider that you got five requirements from them so let us write down all the five requirements other than this okay so what we have in the second requirement here is we have what we have in the first column is requirement id that is your requirement key unique id so the requirement 2 and i will describe the requirement in this requirement description so let me define that the website ui background in black that is your first requirement okay the next requirement is customer should be able to log in on the page that is your other requirement let's say in third requirement is basically images on the ui must be non downloadable okay or l o a d e okay next we got banner after landing page in 5 minutes after user sign in okay the next requirement is something very specific uh, for uh, let's say on the page we got a button to call for inquiry okay so these are your basic requirements and the source of the requirement is now defines that from where does the requirement 
is coming from so if you go back to the website you will able to see requirement id this is a unique identifier requirement description is a brief description of a requirement source is the origin of the source of the requirement so in this case let's say the ui background is the source from stakeholder one whereas customer should be able to log in is a business requirement right images on the ui must not be downloaded that is your that is your business requirement again then it can be five minutes after using is can this can be non-functional requirement but in case of stakeholder requirement again so we can again define that this is again a business requirement right then you got button to call for inquiry this is your functional requirement so you can define the source type of requirement that is one kind of source the other requirement is who has actually given you the requirement and why do you want to consider that requirement is what you mentioned there then you will define the priority as low or high or low or high then ui then you got high here then again high here right and then high and then high now let us let us use our ba brains and define the priority correctly definitely we'll do first thing is dependencies let us go and first do the dependency website ui background in black this is your first first one and it will happen the image on the ui must be non-downloadable this will happen only you have ui properly created so let us let us do one thing let us build the ui first in the black background then images on the ui they will, can be the dependent on that and then whatever we have on the landing page it can be five minutes and you have button to call for anywhere there is no dependency for for this at least so we can define the dependency here that this is dependent on four so we can write here as requirement for dependency so this this particular sorry on two i need to write as four so this particular dependency is dependent on four and this can be on two right so this is dependent on four and this is dependent on two whereas there is there is no dependency for here so we can we can also mention that that is all fine so there is two-way dependency here that is that is what we have defined and next banner after landing page in five minutes after signing it's again fine no problem there and uh, customer should be able to log in so this login and sign in has a defined so it should be login first and then sign in so what i'll do is on six or on this particular one we got a dependency of four so i'll just mention here as r4 sorry four in a sense what four it is let me go and check so r4 no so requirement 3 is what i need to mention so requirement 3 is dependent so this particular thing is dependent on requirement 3 whereas this is dependent on requirement 2 or it is this is dependent on requirement 4 either of the one it can be interrelated and there is no priority we can it might be high or low that is fine and then call for button and other thing is all defined status so if the status here is based on requirement, it's not based on development it is based on requirement the status here is i can give is approved status that means it's approved from the user so if you go back to the website it will show you the importance level that is done the status level is pending approved implemented or tested the current status of the requirement so let's say pending approved implemented or status so we can do like implemented yes if it is implemented then we will have a tested right so if it if it is not implemented then we don't have test case so if it is implemented that's fine and then tested is where you have already have the tested uh, thing in your picture so sorry i'm not able to copy this so let me copy oops i need to change the color so let me change the color or let me write it manually so this is implemented and this is your tested let's say so the con comments and notes is somewhere additional comment information about the requirement that is what we can add design and implementation link to design or implementation documentation whatever we have actually built if we have links we can add that if you have documents for design like you got flow chart here right or you have link uh, or you have link for example link to login and you got flow chart here that can be added as a as a reference or a source then test cases is linked to test cases for validating right? you also have a test case ID, so we can say test case one id 
So this is test case 2 ID where you can use this test cases and you will able to map this here, right? Next validation method. How do you want to test that? Is or is defined here? How the requirement will be validated or tested? You want to define it very very clearly that what are your test cases, right? So you should be able to log in. That is your that is your first thing. Log in on UI. Log in on all apps, all apps and softwares. Okay, that's your that's your next thing. Then cross reference to other documents or artifacts. If you have any other cross reference, you can add them. Change history records or changes that need to be made on the requirement. Basically, if if this requirement is already changed, then this is a version three of the requirement or version two of the requirement. Then that is what we can do in this particular way. And then you got dependency. Any dependency of relationship with other requirements or project elements. So any dependency on that just need to mention that. So this metrics allows a clear organized responsibilities for anyone to work uh, on trace requirements and will give you very very good view as well as for you as well as your project team that will help you to build this one so moving back to the topic there is how do you want to understand this particular topic so please stay tuned till the end and thanks for staying till the end sorry and please go on the website follow it um, download the document then you will able to see how well we can use this website and how well we can uh, manage this okay so thanks for watching this video stay connected and goodbye